Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angelica and I create videos about lifestyle, home decor and DIY projects every single week. So if you're interested in these topics, please subscribe to my channel and stay with me for longer. I hope you're all doing great and you're ready for new DIY projects. So for today, I prepare only one project, only because it's quite big and time consuming. So I wanted to show it more deeply and explain each step uh, of this process with more details. So today I will be creating macrame lampshade, specifically table lampshade. I believe you can use the same design, the pattern on the ceiling lampshade, but my frame is for table lampshade, so that's what I'm going to do today. If you don't know by now, I'm a big fan of macrame. I love working with cord and creating new items. Uh, so relaxing. Um, sometimes it takes long time, but in my opinion it's a very therapeutic process it also looks so stylish especially in like a boho interiors but not only i think you can put few pieces of macrame to any interior style and it will look amazing especially the wall hangings which are so popular at the moment okay so without any further ado let's jump right into this project to create lampshades i will need the frame first I've got here some small collection of lampshade frames. They are mainly from charity shop or cardboard. I think that's the best place to get stuff like that uh, because they are usually very cheap in there. The outside fabric doesn't matter, it's mostly about the shape and usefulness of it. If it's table lampshade or ceiling lampshade, I've decided to go with this one. I like the shape of it the most. So at first I had to get rid of this fabric. It was quite easy process as the fabric was only glued to the metal rings. After taking it off, I had to remove the rest of the glue from the frame. I was able to scrape off some of it and then with the rest I just used sponge and hot water. My frame was in really good condition as it was covered with the fabric from both sides. With any macrame project I always start with the plan. It's very important to calculate how much of rope you need so you will never run out. I start with sketching my lampshade from the top perspective. I've got six metal parts connecting both of the rings together. That creates six equal sections around my lampshade. Then I draw two of these sections and design the pattern I want to go for. For your references, I've measured the size of my lampshade frame. Top diameter is 13 cm, bottom diameter is 30 cm and the tapered edge is 21 cm. So I've got 6 sections which I multiply by 11, that's how many cords will fit in this one section. That comes to 66 pieces of cord. Then again I measure the edge of my frame and add few more centimeters for fringed ETC. So about 35 centimeters multiplied by 5, that's the rough number to calculate how long each core has to be, but it of course depends on the design. That comes to 175 centimeters long for each cord. Now I have to measure this 175 centimeters of cord and cut 66 pieces like that. I've placed the frame on the base lamp so that will make the work easier. And I've got all 66 pieces of cord next to me. So as I said before, I've got six equal sections around the lampshade. Starting with the first one, I'm going to attach 11 cords between the metal posts. I take one piece of cord and fold it in half. This creates loop on the other end. I take this loop, put it around the top ring from the back, then I take the other end of my cord and put it through this loop. Pull it down and tighten it. 
This way you create a large set knot. Now I repeat this process with another 10 cords. Once they are all attached, I make sure they are lined in the straight line and are tightened. Then I'm going to another section and adding another 11 cords. And so on. Using large head knots, I've attached all 66 pieces of cords to my frame. Now let's work on the design. I start working on the first section. First of all, I have to find the middle cords. That's the place where I start my design from. I take the loose cord from the left, which will be my main cord, and the one before it. I hold the main one in one position and go with the other one around it and through the loop. Then with the same core I go around and through the loop again. That way you create double half hitch knot. Then I take another cord from the left and go twice around my main one, keeping the main one diagonally. If you are new to macrame knots, I will leave the link to the video where I explain basic macrame knots step by step. And I repeat this process till I use all my cores from the left side, reaching the metal post. Then I do the same with the right side cords. Once you know the design uh, you are going with, it's very easy and repetitive process. Now I'm finding the middle cords again and basically do the same thing I've done before, this time row lower. And the same on the right side. Try to always pull the knots tight so they stick to the higher row nice and more straight. After I finished this part, I really didn't like the visible metal posts, so what I did, I cut another 6 pieces of cord, each 175 cm long, and attached them to the top ring using Clark's head knot again. Then I realized I have to use this extra cord, which I've just added. So using only one cord from each knot, I added it to the rest of my double half hitch knots. I took my four main cords and two extra from each side and I've put them on the side. Then I divided the rest of the loose cords into three kind of equal sections and create a big chunky square knot. I pull it up tight making sure all cords are straight. Then it was time to close and finish my first rhombus. This time I have to start from the inside. Take your main cord, which belongs to the lower row, and go diagonally, but this time to the right. Just use the cords in the order. Take half of the amount of the cords from the middle part of your square knot and add it to your main cord. Then i done the same on the other side and then I've closed my bigger rhombus.
To make it look like a one piece, I've used double half hitch knots to two main cords. One section is done, let's move to second one. And in here I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Same shape, same design. So on this level of my lampshade I have to create six same shapes, one on each section. Once this is done I'm going level lower. As I said before, I'm going for really easy and repetitive design. So in between my two already created rhombus, I'm going to make another one. This time the top uh, at my new rhombus is actually the bottom of the higher one. So straight away I start with creating square knot in the middle section. Then I close my shape with double half hitch knot. The outside line creates like an extension to the line created before. One is done, now five more to go on the same level in between the previous ones. Two rows are now completed, let's go level lower and do the same thing. The only difference is once you are getting lower, the rhombuses are becoming wider. That means I will need more cords for the double half hitch knots. So I'm taking a new piece of cord, length about 60 centimeters, and attach them to my main cord using lark head knot, but with the loop coming from the bottom. I added two knots to fill the gap on my main cord, and then I continue with process of adding more double half hitch knots. With the outside line, I don't have to add any more cords, so the design is finished. Altogether, I've created four levels of the rhombuses. In the last two levels, I had to add some more cords uh, as the shape of the lampshade gets wider on the bottom. Now it's time to attach all loose cords to the bottom ring. I make like a really simple knot, making sure it's tightly drawn and in the straight line. Try to use the cords uh, in the order, but if you make mistake, you can always move it on the side and tie it to the right place. I could really leave it like that, but I thought it will look better and it will be also more secured if I add another row of knots. I take a piece of cord and measure around the bottom ring. Then I find empty spot and attach one end uh, of this cord to the ring. I go with it around using single half hitch knot. There is few options how you want to finish your lampshade. You can just trim the cord and leave it how it is. You can make some small knots uh, at the ends or like me, unravel all of the cords. I start with cutting all the cords to the same length and then one by one I unravel them. Then again, I'm going around with my scissors to make it super straight. 
I'm super happy with the final result, another piece to my macrame collection. Uh, I've put it on two different lamps just to show you that it looks really nice on any kind of the base in different uh, interior styles. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this project. If you do, please click the like button, I will really appreciate it. And also let me know in the comments section if there is anything macrame you want to see me doing. So far I created coasters, handbag, uh, wall hanging, photo frame, mirror, which you can even see behind me. So I will leave the links to all of this video in the description box in case you want to go and check them out. This lampshade took me about two days to finish it off. So it's quite a long time, but I love the result. So it was absolutely worth it. It's also budget friendly. Uh, I spent about one pound for the uh, frame, which I bought on cardboard. And altogether, I used about 160 meters of cord. And you can get 200 meters of cord for about nine pounds. I will leave some links in the description box with the ropes I usually use. And I also put some other colors if you are bolder with your color choices. So about eight pounds for lampshade like that. It's really good price. You won't get it anywhere cheaper. Of course, you spend your time doing it, but for me, it's a pleasure. So I don't calculate it. And for now, thank you so much for watching and your support. And I will see you in my next video.